Hi guys, today we are on our 11th video. As a surprise, I got my braces. Ko. I'm trying maybe to start a new series and let's call it What the Heck Is. So for this kind of playlist, we will try to give context around specific terms that are about personal finance or productivity. And for this time, let's talk about MP2. So what the heck is MP2? We will outline this. First is what is MP2 from Pag-ibig. Second, what other products does Pag-ibig offer aside from MP2? We know Pag-ibig is more about salary thing. Let's try to have a broader information on what Pag-ibig actually offers. Third is how to open an MP2 account if you will consider. Fourth is how to make a deposit on MP2 which I will show step by step using one payment channel and then lastly what are my thoughts on mp2 so before we start let me clarify that this is more of a video about me sharing my personal information and experience with mp2 and it is still in your discretion to find out which investment scheme is the best for you and always do your own research because it's the best way to figure out how or which investment option is the best for you depending on your risk appetite and or or preference. So let's start. First is what is Pag-ibig MP2? If you go to their Pag-ibig MP2 site, it is said here that Pag-ibig fund sets aside at least 70% of its annual net income and credits it proportionately to its members' Pag-ibig savings as dividends. What you are earning from this essentially are dividends from the Pag-ibig corporation or from the Pag-ibig savings. It's like a deposit account or a time deposit account, it is a voluntary program and you earn higher dividend rate compared to the Pag-ibig regular savings. Now this brings us to the next topic, what other products does Pag-ibig actually offer? Now if you try to go to their homepage of Pag-ibig, there are many services or products that Pag-ibig offers. So aside from MP2, we also have their portal which is virtual Pag-ibig for members or for employers. There is also the Kasambahay membership registration, short-term loan online application, or loan applications in general. So usually when you try to apply for loans, Pag-ibig is your go-to. And of course, the regular savings program, which is about workers' monthly contribution to Pag-ibig. Regular savings is also called as Pag-ibig monthly contribution. Now, this regular savings program, for the regular savings, the minimum monthly contribution is 100 pesos. But for employees, usually this is automatically deducted in your salary. The employers try to reflect or mirror how much you deposited. So that it will be double the amount you deposited and on top of that there's also the annual dividend rate in which they provide a tax-free earnings depending on the overall contribution that you made for the year here is the table of the annual rates of last year's so if you will try to see from the image when the pandemic happened there was a decrease on the dividend rate but right now it's still above four percent which is the average inflation rate but right now we are having a high inflation rate so maybe it's still a good way to kind of alleviate the effects of inflation. Now back to MP2, given the table that we have seen earlier for the regular savings, what about MP2? So for the MP2, since this is a voluntary program, there is a higher dividend rate actually. For the last years, the maximum dividend rate was actually 8.11% in 2017. And in 2021, the dividend rate was 6%, which is about the inflation rate that's been happening right now. If you are a conservative person, depending on your risk appetite, then maybe this is something that you can consider. Now, third part is how to open an MP2 account. So if maybe you will now consider opening one, I can share my experience on how I open mine and then guide you after. So from my own experience in 2020, I didn't have to go to any Pag-ibig branch. All of the steps that I made was online. The main reference that I kind of referred to was from the Filipino. So I will just link it in the description. Maybe the reminders that I can give for this is firstly is to take note of your MID number. So MID number is your membership ID number because in the article, they will provide an application form in which you will try to fill up. Anyway, my iBugs look so, I don't know. The guide is already pretty comprehensive. You can navigate the web page for more information on how to open an account in Pagibig. If you're a working adult, your HR often handles this part. But if you're a student or an OFW or an unemployed person trying to open your own Pagibig account, then this is a good reference to check so that you can open your own Pagibig account. Yay! <laughs> the steps mostly cover about accessing the Pagibig Fund online registration system and then accomplishing the pre-registration form, filling out the online registration form, and then um, accomplishing the boxes about your membership info. And then after that, you will receive your MID number through SMS. And then from there, you will be notified if your account is open. As far as I can remember, it took me around two weeks 
to receive my MID and open my own account. Once you open your account, then that's the time you can actually make a contribution. Before you have an MP2, you will be first required to have a an active Pagibig member. So how do you become an active Pagibig member? Well, the application process does not require you to provide a valid ID. As long as you're able to fill out your membership information, you will be able to receive your MID after. Once you have your own Pagibig account, you can now start to proceed depositing on your monthly contribution or your regular savings. And then from there, once you're able to deposit, then you will become an active Pagibig member. And when you're an active Pagibig member, that's the time you can now open your separate MP2 account. So for the MP2 account, you can actually open multiple MP2 accounts. In my case, I only have one account. So if you want to open many, feel free to do so. Now, how did I make that monthly contribution and MP2 contribution? This is the next part now, which is about how to actually make a deposit on Pagibi. So currently, there are many channels that provide government services payments, mostly e-wallets like Gcash and Maya. And then for this video, I will try to show you how to make a deposit using Shopee Pay. Currently, I think Shopee Pay is the best option to make contributions in Bagibig because they provide many cashback vouchers and discounts using coins. We are now in Shopee Pay and let's go to load bills and travels and then click government services and then click for Pagibig. There will be option to provide which payment type you want to have, your membership savings, your housing loan, or your Pagibig MP2. Now let's go for Pagibig MP2 because that is our goal. And just input your MP2 number which starts with number 5. Then select your region. So for me, uh, my region is Philippines, of course. Select the amount that you want to deposit. For context, the minimum monthly contribution for MP2 is 500 pesos. And then you can redeem up to 200 coins to get discounts on your payment. And also, you can have a cashback voucher so you can get 100, up to 100 coins back. Usually, on double-digit sales and payday sales, you also get better promotions so you can maximize your earnings, uh, your savings. There will be a 7 peso convenience fee. So this 7 peso convenience fee is also present in Gcash and Maya. Yeah. Click pay now. And yeah, your payment will be processed and will reflect in the Pagibig portal after 2 to 3 days. I hope this video is helpful guide you in making a deposit on your MP2 account. Uh, you can also use your Shopee Pay to make deposits on your regular savings. Now that I've shown you what MP2 is, what Pagibig and their products are, and how to make a deposit and open an account on MP2, what now are my thoughts about Pagibig MP2 program. Since the pandemic, MP2 has become popular and until now, it's making promises to its regular dividend rates. Let's try to look at MP2 from different perspectives. So first is the gains or the interest rates. Well, Pagibig MP2 as of 2021 offered around 6% dividend rate. That is almost equal to the inflation rate right now in 2022. And compared to other investment options like digital banks, stocks, and bonds, those other options have actually taxes when you try to withdraw from them. For Pagibig MP2, there is no tax involved. You will get exactly how much percentage was posted. So for reference, for CBank, the promo that they gave is 6%, which will go turn back to 5%. There is a withholding tax, so you get less than 5% actually. For MP2, there is no such tax involvement. Secondly, in terms of liquidity, liquidity is basically how you can use the funds that you have deposited if ever you will need them. So for reference, for CBank, you can immediately use your cash and transfer it to your local bank or Gcash so you can use it immediately. Digital banks are relatively more liquid. Now for MP2, when you try to withdraw your funds, on most cases, you will have to go to your Pagibig branch and make a request for withdrawal. And usually, this will be in the form of a check and there will be more processes to actually withdraw your funds. So relatively, it is less liquid. MP2 is an investment option that you can consider if you are forcing discipline in your savings. Another aspect is the customer service. So Pagibig MP2 is actually great with customer service. They have their own help center in their virtual Pagibig portal. You can also email them, but personally, I think their response rate is quicker in the help center in their portal than their email. And aside from these three aspects, which are the interest rate, the liquidity, and the customer service, you should also try to look at the other factors, such as your proximity to a Pagibig branch, your time horizon on how long you want to invest your money on. So it can be 
5 years, 10 years, or 30 years down the road. And third is your stage in your personal finance journey. So if you will recall in my last video too, firstly, you have a good financial mindset to start on your personal finance journey. Second is to build your emergency fund so that you can have a safety net if ever emergencies occur. Third is the time you can start exploring investment options like this depending on your risk appetite or also you can explore other investment schemes and then increase your income and then so on so yeah those are the factors that you can try to consider if you want to open an mp2 account some people are more aggressive with their investment options and try to explore other schemes while some are more risk averse and try to consider options like this mp2 so yeah so that's so far what mp2 is i hope this video helps you in opening your mp2 account and i hope you all reach our personal finance goals thank you guys maybe you can also leave a like and comment in this video because it helps the algorithm and maybe subscribe. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, I said it now. Oh my god. Cool. Bye.